know, I preach this to, to all of my clients, you know, it's really trying to create a new lifestyle change, you know, adding health and fitness into your, into your normal, you know, everyday routine. Um, I call it a WD-40. So I'm not sure if that is a worldwide thing or not. WD-40 is a lubricant that we use in the States here for like a door hinge. And so I use that for my list and I call it the WD-40 list. And so every client will have similar exercises, but then many people have their you know, own individual exercises too that will help them get up, get moving, and then hopefully move better throughout the day. You know, and that's really the approach. I do believe that we need to have different intensities. I think you need to progress, obviously, and where we both want that. But one of the biggest things here is making sure that we stay consistent, you know, um, Teaching, teaching health and, and exercise rather specifically can be very intimidating to a, a lot of people. Um, I would definitely say it's much more of a, um, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'd rather just not do. And I do, I understand that, that makes sense. But really it's, you know, just kind of having a little simple plan, simple start and just making your way from there. Um, so again, you know, kind of bottom line is quality of life and we're trying to make that just a little bit better for you. Um, when Bill and I first met, it was pretty close to about five years ago and we met in a big gym. So it was a, it was a 24 hour fitness and, you know, he, he was a little skeptical for sure. Um, I think he's had a few people try to tell him certain things of what he can and cannot do. So I think he had a little, you know, skepticism from the sense of what I was saying and then what other people were saying too. And the, in the sense that I was saying, I think we can make it better. And he's going, well, that sounds great. You know, I like the, I like the energy, but you know, I need to have a little bit of convincing. I need to feel it. And that's great. You know, I mean, that is one of the biggest things that everybody just needs to give it a little try, have a focus on maybe a couple of different exercises and see how it can benefit them. Um, one spot that I have noticed a bunch in, you know, with, a, with FSH specifically is usually around the shoulder areas and the scapula area. So that's your shoulder blade. Um, and that was definitely a big one that we addressed right away. I wanted Bill to have something that he could do where it's not balanced. You know, that's a, that's a tough one too. So we just kind of started with like seated exercises and it was just moving the arm bones. At the very beginning, I would say I gave a lot of assistance. I definitely put it to the point where it was, um, you know, a lot of me doing the ranges of motion. And so just for example, let's say we had Bill sitting on a chair and I would kind of go hand in hand with him and we would just do some pressing. So I would be doing a lot of the range of motion, mostly so his brain could feel it. We really want to correlate, you know, that pressing motion with some of the muscles that are actually making that, that job happen. So while we would be doing these exercises, I would really go, you know, kind of extensive on explaining the certain groups of muscles and explaining what the other groups of muscles are doing as well while we're using the chest. So let me kind of reiterate that again. Bill sitting down, we're doing a chest press. The main muscles with a chest press is your chest. Okay, we're using the front side of the chest. Now, when he's sitting there though, the core should still be working. Because if I really wanted to, I just maybe push him over. Now we wanted to make it to the point where the body is having to keep your skeletal system in the spot where it's at, whether it's standing or sitting. So when I would make those pushes with him, he would feel that. He would feel that aggression where he'd have to either activate the chest muscles, or if I pushed hard enough, he'd have to activate his core, or else he would just fall backwards. Now, of course, we only give the appropriate amount of resistance. So if he can give me on a, let's say on a scale of one to 10, if he could give me a one, I'd go about a 0.9. You know, so it's just barely a little less than what he can give me, but we're trying to teach the brain how these muscle patterns work, you know, whether it's an action of a straight across or if it's an action up, a, up above. There are definitely still certain movements that are still very difficult for Bill to make, you know, and we, we focus on them, but we don't necessarily, you know, have a negative reinforcement from them, you know, and we, we got to stay positive, got to stay in the sense of what can I do rather than what can I not do? Because things that he couldn't do that was in that section, you know, maybe a couple of years later, he all of a sudden could. But if we're constantly focusing on all the things that we can't do, it's, it's not really that motivating factor that's going to get you up in the morning, you know, and, and make yourself move and feel good about it. So 
again, you just got to find those certain exercises and routines that'll just make you move better throughout the day. If you do that on a regular basis, I've had a lot of success with, you know, not just people with FSHD, but anybody and everybody, you know, we need to incorporate exercise into our lifestyles and make exercise not a chore. That is a whole other concept, you know, so kind of like I was saying at the beginning, we don't need to go to the gym and be dripping sweat, be super sore the next day for it to be a quality workout. We are teaching our body. We're teaching our body to be stable and then eventually be mobile and have a little bit of both of those. You know, every time we walk to the car, every time we have to get up and use the restroom, you know, I want you to feel safe. I want you to feel safe either sitting down on the toilet or even just getting to the bathroom. There is a lot of areas in, in our normal everyday life where we can either, you know, fall, we can miss a step, we can miss a handle. You know, there's a lot of areas there. So we have to practice those things. Um, when I kind of talk about that, that makes me think about uh, we, we do something called free falls, where literally it's that's pretty much what it is. And I'll either give him a dowel, like a stick to hold on to, and I'll do the other side and just kind of give him a little bit more stability. And he'll just step forward, like as if he's kind of falling forward, and then regain your stability. So it sounds really simple, but it's, it's very, very effective. And it teaches you. You know, and what we need to do is practice those scary situations that we maybe are taking a fall or missing a step, and we need to practice them in as safe of an environment as we can. And when you have somebody else giving you a little bit of an assistance in a gym and you're thinking about everything, that's a, that's a pretty darn safe environment for practicing things that can happen. Now, I'm not telling you to go to the point where it's all practicing falling, but we do need to be aware with that. We need to be aware with how to regain our stability and regain our balance so that we can continue going forward, going left, getting down, getting up, whatever the demand is. And that's a hard concept sometimes to, you know, kind of wrap around the head. Um, you know, again, with balance, you know, there's just as much as our body balance, there's a balance to all of your bones too. So that's a big factor that I wanted to talk about today is that every bone has kind of a push and a pull. If there's a push muscle, there's a pull muscle. If there's a get that bone to go this way, one muscle is doing that. Um, and I always like to use a cell phone tower as an example. So if we have a big tower in the center, you know, there's wires all the way around it to help keep it nice and supported. Now, if there's a tight wire on one side and it starts leaning, you wouldn't tighten that wire up more. You would go to the other side to tighten that wire up to get it back to the center. And that's what we want to think about there, too. So when we have a scapula, when I was talking about that scapula back there, that arm bone and the scapula have a great relationship. And I know that a lot of the, some, a lot of weakness, a lot of times in people with FSHD, we find weakness in the scapula area, the shoulder girdle area. So we just need to train those motions. Now, does that mean go and get really, really heavy resistance? It doesn't. Could you? Yes, you could. But it's all into what you your capabilities are, you know? So if it's just your body weight or somebody assisting you, that's great. We're still, we're teaching the motion. You know, Bill and I, like I said, we started with just our body weights, or body weight, excuse me, you know, and just my hand kind of guiding, whether he was pulling my hand in or he was pushing my hand out, you know, and it's making those muscles work. I would always kind of ask him too, you know, is that, is that working? Can you feel that? You know, and just try to kind of ask him the questions that make him have to kind of solve that problem in his brain to his body connection, you know, and did I know that it was working? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to make the action if the muscle doesn't work sometimes. So yes, I really do believe that the muscle, the groups of muscles were working, but it's making that connection. Okay, so constantly, you know, consistently ask yourself, what am I doing here? What groups of muscles are being involved? And can I feel that? You know, and that's, again, simple, simple starts, you know, just sitting down, making some pushes, sitting down, um, you know, if you don't have somebody, I'm like giving somebody a, a suggestion here, if we have, you know, a dinner table at home or a kitchen counter, sit down in a chair and just bring the arm forward, bring the arm backwards and use the kitchen counter for just an assistance. Like if you're not able to leave that arm up at like a parallel part to the ground, use the counter. There is a lot of ways to be very creative to get the job done. So that is one thing that I really wanted to, you know, voice and voice and voice and voice again is don't get stuck thinking you have to have a full gym. Don't get stuck thinking you have to have all this crazy, awesome equipment. Your body is the best piece of equipment you can have. 
start with that. You know, start with a single single leg, start with two legs, or go to two legs, start with a single arm, go to two arms, you know, sit down if you need to, stand tall if you can, um, you know, exercise bikes, stuff like that, treadmills. Awesome. It's, it's all good. But I don't need you to go and spend, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars just to try to get exercise involved in your life. That is the biggest part that I really had to kind of implement to, well, I would, I would really say actually everybody, but Bill was a big one because, you know, he's thinking of exercise. He's thinking of, you know, how to get stronger, how to help himself move. And, you know, he walked into a gym. Is that a wrong decision? No, not at all. It led him to, you know, where we're at today. So I'm not saying don't go to a gym, but don't get stuck thinking you have to have all these different apparatuses to make the movements and, you know, workouts work for yourself. So keep it simple. It goes a long way, simple and effective. Um, core, core is definitely something as well that I find to be a very consistent thing for weakness, a weaker area. And a lot of times it's the lower abdominals. Um, I think when, when June and I and, and Bill were doing those webinars, um, goodness, probably about a year and a half ago or so now, kind of towards the beginning of the pandemic, um, there was a lot of questions regarding how to work your lower abdominals, how to work your core. Um, and so I want to go over this, you know, real quickly, that our core is not our abs. Our abs are part of the core, but it's not our abs. So we need to think about, you know, I always kind of give people the image of if you've ever seen a, a skeleton in like a science classroom or a skeleton just, you know, kind of hanging, whether it's during Halloween or whatever, think about where that skeleton is supposed to be. And if it's not where it's supposed to be, there's muscles that are pulling it either one way or the other. So we need to allow for, you know, that new position to be present and that new position for you to feel comfortable there. How do we do that? But one of my favorite positions is called the dead bug. So a dead bug, you lay on your back, your feet are up off the ground, your knees are bent, and your hands are up off the ground. Okay, if you can't get your arms off the ground, it's not a problem. If you can't get your legs off the ground, it's not really a problem. If we can't get onto the ground, yes, we can make some adjustments there too, but the ground is going to be kind of the cheat. Now, when you're laying on the ground, I want your spine and your pelvis to be rather flat. Now, instantly right there, that's the position of the spine and the pelvic area that I want to be present when we're standing. So as you're on your back, I want you to imagine as if you were standing and trying to activate that area that would keep your spine and pelvis there. Now, again, it's not the abs. The abs bring your upper body forward or they do something called spinal flexion, which is just our upper body going you know, forward towards the knees rather if you're on your back or if you're standing tall, you just reach down towards the ground. That's more of your abs bringing you forward. Yes, of course, gravity does that too, but your abs should be present. Now, when it talks about the core, it's all over the place. Everything all the way around our midsection and our trunk is what we're trying to activate when we say core strength. So getting things more involved in the sense of being in a position and just trying to hold that position that's a great way to start doing sit-ups. It's not horrible, but it's not necessarily required. I don't need you to do sit-ups. Don't have that be your, your main objective. Try to find ways that'll challenge your body to keeping it in the same position. So if we go back to that dead bug, okay, you're laying on your back, your feet are up, your feet are off the ground, your knees are above your hips, okay, your wrists are above your shoulders. So if you can get all those limbs up while keeping that position with your trunk, that is a distraction. Now, that's what we pretty much do in exercise and fitness with getting the core to be taxed and trained is distracting it. Now, outside, we constantly have that. As we walk, as we grab, as we grab the fridge or we grab, you know, it was just Thanksgiving, as you grab a turkey out of the oven and you pull it out, you know, things like that, everyday activities, we want all the muscles around the areas of the spine and the pelvis to be supporting the movements. If it's just your abs, you're imbalanced. It's kind of like that cell phone tower with one really strong wire. I want all the wires around that cell phone tower to be strong, be efficient, and know how to move, know how to do it. And the only way we know is, is we practice. 
you know, and there is enough people out there that know, you know, the body and the movements of what we can and cannot do. So just find somebody that can give you some assistance. If it's more to the point where it's, you know, you feel like you have a really good idea there. Well, I would, I would, you know, kind of advise going to my Instagram. It's at Mitch Wade, PDX, M-I-T-C-H-W-A-D-E-P-D-X. Um, and you'll find some of the exercises and videos that Bill and I did. Um, I actually used the Instagram. That was actually the, the very start of my Instagram, uh, you know, career was doing this with Bill. And so I think the very beginning videos on that page, you'll find um, the exercises that Bill and I were trying to show people that were just, you know, us being creative, us having fun, and then, ha you know, getting results. And you'll see what we did. It's all over the place. It doesn't need to be one, you know, simple thing. Have fun with it. You know, that is the biggest thing is I need Bill to want to come back and see me, not just the sense of like, oh, I have to go do this again today. I want him to be, you know, like this is something I want him to look forward to, you know, because then we're going to correlate exercise with the correlation of feeling good, you know, maybe moving better, you know, and the mental, the mental capacity of, you know, health is huge. And so you really got to get that all balanced with the, with the exercise. And I promise to you, I've seen enough people that if it's, if it's a chore and you got to make yourself get up and do it, or you don't like the exercises, the way we're doing it, change it up. You've got to change it up because, you know, the, the longevity of things, keeping things, you know, exercising and movement for the rest of your life, it's got to be a fun approach. And if it becomes a chore, it just, it's very quickly and very easily not done. It's much easier to not exercise than it is to exercise. And I get that. Um, you know, so when it comes to those certain things, make a plan. You know, I have people now um, with, especially with the pandemic, you know, a lot of things have changed when it comes to training. Many people are doing it at home. Many people are doing it on Zoom. Um, people are following online, you know, um, like Zoom workouts where they just set up their gym in their in their office or you know maybe the garage there's there's endless amounts of options just get a little bit of a lead you know ask people look it up on on google on youtube you know whatever whatever it is there there's so many resources out there but you need to have an idea of what you're looking for that's the only problem when it comes to the world wide web is that anybody can post anything so have an idea as to what you're looking for. And then, you know, if you get kind of stumped, that's where you, you reach out to somebody. And I'm more than happy to help anybody. Um, yes, of course, we do have a time difference. But, you know, th there's, there's ways around that all. You know, there really is. And it's just more so of having that plan. And so I have, you know, clients put up a whiteboard in their workout room. And we just kind of fill the whiteboard out each week where it's more of a, why don't we, why don't we focus on this, you know, give them some new ideas some different things. If it's, if it's always the same, sometimes it can, it can get a little bit boring, you know? And so going back to that chore thing, I mean, if we've been exercising for our whole lives, that's a long time, you know? So yeah, we've got to spruce things up, change it up a little bit, have some fun, different intensities. Some days, let's say you didn't sleep very well, which I've been learning a lot about that the last few months, you know, little kiddos don't let you sleep all the time you have to adjust. If I didn't sleep at all the night before, but yet my workout program says I have to run 12 miles and do this and do that, you know, make some adjustments. It's okay. You know, we want to give our body what our body wants, you know, and a lot of times it's, if we're super, super tired, I don't think it'd be very beneficial to go try and push it to the, the extremes, you know, push it to the max. So always listen to your body. That'll be a really, really good way to set yourself up for success. Um, if it's multiple days in a row that you're tired and not getting, you know, the sleep that you need, that's where you've got to sit back and say, how can I change that too? You know, because yes, we're always going to have certain nights, maybe we just don't sleep, we ate something that didn't settle well, but there's a lot of ways that we can usually adjust that and setting yourself up for success is key. Um, I believe strongly in morning movements. And so that's something that I preach a lot to my clients as well, where it's easy to, at the end of the day, just kind of push it past and say, oh, I don't have the time or, you know, I'm really tired today. It was really long. Well, that's when I think it's really important for us to get up in the morning and get moving. And with that concept, too, is if we get up and do our WD-40s, like I was explaining earlier, I assume that you're going to be moving more efficiently throughout the day than as if you didn't do it. And that's a win right away. So if we do that every single morning, I, I have a hard time to think that you're going to get any worse. You know, I mean, our bodies can constantly kind of have the ups and downs. We have our holiday season, stuff like that. But 
a consistent schedule will keep it to the point where you're constantly listening to your body, trying to give it what it's asking, you know, and then usually that ball just kind of rolls on its own. Um, when it comes to heavy, heavy strength training, there is a lot of research where I've had a lot of people say, you know, the research has shown that if I exercise too much, if I exercise too hard, it can actually progress the, the dystrophy. Um, and I have read those, those studies and some of the research, um, you know, but I've also read the opposite. So again, there's so much out there on the World Wide Web that we just need to kind of filter through a little bit and see, you know, read people's reviews, read people's, you know, already like what they've already done for approaches and did it work, did it not, you know, and then everybody is so unique and different that it might work for one person and it might not work for the other. So that's where you've just got to set up your own plan. Know what you need. Okay, let's say we can't stand. Well, I'm just going to try to work your, your feet and your toes. I mean, those are areas that are very beneficial. I have a mentor that I follow that says if we had abs on the bottom of our feet, we would focus on them more. Well, I somewhat believe in that. A lot of times we are on our feet all day long. So that's the one thing that is contacting the ground for a good amount of time. But yet we don't really ever do abs, you know, like sit-ups in our feet, which they can do. They can curl, they can lift, they can spread, you know, they can roll in, they can roll out. So those are all exercises that Bill and I worked on. It's easy. It's sitting down. You know, is it still hard? Yeah, you're still having to do it. You still have to make it happen. But regressions and progressions are everywhere. You just got to find that spot as to where you fit in. And again, if you don't have those answers, you know, look for somebody for some help. You might not need to do it forever, but get a little bit of assistance. It's a little bit like a plumber or electrician. I don't know how to do those things. So I'm going to call somebody and say, hey, I need some assistance here. Trust me, they're going to get it done at a much faster pace than I would, even if I like, you know, really devoted my time to try to figure it out. It's sometimes just a little bit easier slash more efficient to have somebody that has been involved in this, you know, area and has some experience there. I can lead you in the right direction. Um, but back to kind of that strength training, Bill and I definitely started body weight, um, mostly because I think he was a little bit concerned with just some of the things that he has read. Bill is very educated and well-read. So, you know, when he first came in, he kind of said that to me and he said, you know, I haven't really found anybody that's really taken the time to really dive deep into this. Um, you know, this research and this study shows this, and this one kind of shows this you know, what do you think? And really, honestly, my response to him was, we're not really going to know until we try. Now, what does that mean? Do you go and jump off the high, the, the high dive right away? Or do you kind of, you know, make your progressions up there and see how far we can get? That's what Bill and I did. We did it in a very smart way. You know, we took our time. I told him right away, I said, you know, I'm going to need you to be patient with the process, patient with me and patient with yourself. You know, don't think that more is better. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes just being consistent is, is the best way we can go. You know, and if you do it a couple of times a day because it fatigues you for the first time and you're, you're done after 10 minutes, be done. But do it consistently. You know, and let's say you start and you got 10 minutes in the tank and you're done. You, you call it good for the day. But in a year, you've got an hour. You've got even 30 minutes. That's progression. And that's all we're looking for. Everybody can choose how far they want to go and how far they want to push. But we all need to create some movements. I promise. It, it's a, it, there's, a, there's so many different levels of benefits as to what exercise do, does for us. You know, and a lot of it doesn't necessarily pertain to dystrophy. It's more of getting your blood flowing. You know, getting the blood flow so that our blood actually removes some of the byproducts and the toxins in our body. You know, that's really what our blood does. You know, it reheals. It, it gets that whole system moving and going. And then our hormones. So our hormone balance of, you know, being happy, endorphin, stuff like that. You know, I mean, all it really takes is just a little bit of movement. So, I mean, I can't even really count of how many times I've maybe had a client come in towards the latter end of the day. And I can just tell that they're stressed it was a long day you know and how many times people leave like we don't talk about it necessarily if they want to talk about it sure but we don't necessarily talk about all the negative things it's more of a hey let's just get moving let's do a couple of these things we'll work on some breathing exercises which is pretty easy we all have lungs we all have a mouth we all have a nose 
breathing is simple, okay? The breathing process is really what pumps the blood through the body. So even just starting there, you might have a little bit of stress relief. You might have a little bit of endorsin, endorphin, excuse me, release. And that's what we're looking for. We're just looking for people to feel better. That's it. You know, and how do we do that? It's all up to you. You can start at A, you can start at B, you can start at M or Z, wherever you're at, whatever you want to do, but create a plan, create a plan, listen to that plan, know what it is and try to, you know, try to live in that plan. And it's, it's, it is easier than, you know, it sounds. And if it's not for you, reach out, reach out to somebody, reach out to myself. I'm more than happy to help anybody with some questions here. You know, it's really, it's a simple process if you let it be simple. I do know it is a difficult process. So that is one thing that Bill and I have talked about a lot, you know, in the sense of it's okay for it to be hard. It's okay. You know, let it be hard. Have fun with it. Have fun that it's challenging. And then maybe in a few months, we'll be able to do that. You know, Bill was having a very hard time in the sense of kind of the mental barrier of saying, you know, I, I can't do that. And again, I just, you know, where we usually always end up going is let's not focus on what we can't do. Let's focus on what we can do. And that is just such a positive way to look at things. And it really, really helps. You know, for the most part, I would say me and Bill probably get through anywhere between five and eight exercises a day, you know, and a lot of times it's kind of a adjust as you go. I say, how does that feel? And he's like, I, I don't think I can really feel that. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm getting the right, the right areas. You know, I'm not activating the right spots. So then we'll step back from that exercise. We'll go and do something that maybe will help him feel, maybe isolate it. Isolate means one area, one muscle group, one muscle, maybe even, you know, specifically. And then bring him back into standing, using both arms and trying to make the action happen. And then he'll say, oh, I feel it. I got it. And that's the connection that we're looking for. That's it. You know, it can be rather simple. Don't think it needs to be so complex for you to all of a sudden start being able to do A, B, and C. Maybe a couple of years down the road, it might seem complex if you were to look at that, you know, say, let's say we're on day one and in, you know, 365 days, we're going to be here. That might seem really intense, but once you get to that 365th day, it's going to feel about the same amount of overload because we gradually progressed and we do this on a regular basis yeah hey mitch yeah. this is oh sorry can you hear me yep all right great um this is fantastic i see that uh crystal has her hand up i thought is this might be a good time for people to also start maybe turning their videos back on and um asking if you have questions raise your hand i think that might be nice and uh for mitch also to see more than a <laughs> <laughs> Than, than blank, myself speaking yeah no, I, I would say anybody anytime ask questions it's really you know it's really a great way to keep the conversation rolling I can sit here and you know speak about me and Bill's experiences forever um, and that's good to hear too but I think people like to kind of have the connection as to what about your situation yeah. and then chances are somebody else might be in your situation yeah. too so I think feel, feel free stimulated a lot of ideas and questions in our audience so Crystal what's your yeah, thank you, Mitch. That's that's that is very encouraging. I had a um I've got a question with regards to um when you're working, like when you worked with Bill, how did you know what uh, muscles were actually fatigued and which ones um you know needed needed that training? Because sometimes when um like I find with doing weight training at the moment, trying to strengthen my arms. Um, and strengthen those muscles that I feel are still working. Um, there's other muscles that get fatigued in the process. And um, so the, the um, tendency for, is to keep pushing to try and strengthen those other, those other muscles. But in the meanwhile, you're fatiguing like the, the, the neck muscles and um, you only realize that later. So how did you, working with Bill or your suggestion, um, how do you know which muscles are needing to be worked and which ones you should um, sort of leave alone and, and rest for the moment? Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, you know, I think the, the best way I can explain this, and I've done this before with Bill, and I think I actually use this as an example at the very beginning, is uh, a strain of Christmas lights. Okay? And if there's four bulbs out, 
visually you can see that so you're going to go and replace the bulbs now i'm going to do kind of that same thing with bill and i'm going to have him do some kind of an action that i would want to you know almost from a peripheral standpoint step back and try to see where those bulbs are missing now that comes with experience and practice so i have done that for many many years with many many people so it helps the sense of i think we need to go here and then isolate and then I do something called an isometric contraction. Now, an isometric contraction is used in many, 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 you know, programs. Um, but what an isometric contraction means is the muscle is working, the joint is not. Now, when it comes to, let's just use a, a chest press, actually, for example, as I've kind of been doing that already today, your Bill's tendency, and maybe yours as well, is to use those muscles that your brain is connected to that says, I'm going to use those because they're strong. So then we're going to sit and maybe even just like try to push a wall over. And I'm going to tell him, lower down, use here. And so it's, it's not the movement. If it, if it goes back and forth with the movement, it might get those to fire too much. If he just sits there and pushes into a wall, now, most walls are, you know, strong enough that they're not going to go anywhere. So that's the point. So do do also, if, I, if you're listening to me, pick a wall that's very strong and secure. Let's not make damage into, you know, maybe the wall and you broke it and it pushed over. So you want to find something that's very strong. Now, when you're pushing into it, it's not going to move and neither are you. And so at that point, you still have muscles that are activating. And that's where we would play with that brain saying, how does this feel? I would go up and palpate it, touch it. And then he would give me kind of feedback. If I felt like it was a rock, we would drop the arms, relax for a second and come right back. You know, so something really simple like that, which I know just sounds like the simplest answer ever. That's kind of what my point is though. Don't overthink some of these things. Some of these things we're thinking it needs to be so complex and so intense. You gotta be dripping sweat and that's the only way you're gonna progress. Chances are that's actually the, almost the wrong way to go because if you just push so hard and you're sweating you're grueling and you're like this has got to be good for me and the next day all you feel is just tightness up here you've made bad correlation you've said exercise is not good for me and i'm gonna flip it and say no that exercise at the time was the wrong exercise for you and you aren't necessarily a, you know relaying the whole exercise to the whole body you're just putting it into where your body is strong, where your body has connection, and where your body has learned how to compensate. We are all very good at compensating. If our car that's supposed to have four wheels only has three, we can't compensate with that. We wouldn't drive it. But if our body has, you know, let's just make up a number, 15 areas that need to work, but only nine of them are working, we can compensate and a lot of times still get the job done is it done as well as you want it to be maybe not because of that area of weakness you actually can't get that done but you still get it done to the point where it needs to be done and that a lot of times can be maybe just one muscle group one area and a lot of times yes it is the upper traps that is a very common thing that i've seen with with fshd um i have probably worked with about let's say 11 or 12 different people. And I consistently work with about four. And I've done that for a couple of years ever since we started the webinars. And then with Bill, I work with him two or three days a week for the last five or six years. Um, you know, on that note though, too, when Bill goes out of town, I tell him to go out of town and have fun. You know, don't get stuck that like you have to exercise every single day for the rest of your life. That's not what I'm saying either. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy those times that we have holidays or you have vacations or you have family in town. If you feel better by getting up and doing some movement, get up and do it for 10 to 15 minutes. It doesn't need to be an hour and a half. You know, I don't need you to tell your family, oh, I can't, I can't be with you guys because Mitch tells me I have to work out for an hour and a half a day. <laughs> I think it's going to be beneficial for you. It wouldn't hurt you, but we also need to make sure that we're getting everything else well, well-rounded. You know, if, if we're stressed because we have to work out, it's going to be not necessarily not positive, but it could be a little bit of a negative reinforcement there too. So everything just needs to be, you know, set up for success and positivity from that beginning, you know? So if it's too much, hold back, go with what your body is telling you. If your traps, if your upper shoulders are just 
igniting on the exercise you're doing, see if you can make it a little easier. See if you can do something. If, is it sitting down instead of standing? Is it going with two feet next to each other instead of one foot forward, one foot back? You know, there is ways to challenge and distract the body in all different exercises. But let's also find ways to maybe make it easier too. Go ahead. Um, Mitch, with Bill, did you see, have you seen a lot of improvement in his movement? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, so Bill, when he was, oh, I might, I might be off on this number. I wanna say when he was around 30-ish, mid 30s, they had an idea to fuse his scapula. Um, and that was mostly just for postural movements, being able to do certain things, but it would take away obviously certain ranges as well. Um, and he chose to not do that. Um, I know I have encountered a couple of people that have gone through that process and there's still plenty, plenty for you to be able to do. You're a little bit more inhibited on certain things, but we still have plenty of, of exercises to be able to go through. With Bill, he wasn't able to drink water himself. And, you know, that's big. That's a, uh, that's a necessity, you know, for the most part. We all need our water. We all need our fluids, our food. You know, we need to use our restrooms break, you know, our restroom breaks, you know, stuff like that. That is just, you know, things that maybe we'll overlook at first. And then once you aren't able to do that, it really takes away a lot of quality of life. And you have to have somebody else there a lot or help you with certain things. And so would I say that every single muscle that was, you know, atrophied is, is way stronger? No, I, I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be 100%, you know, better. Um, every single day we age. You know, I mean, every one of my clients would love to be 15 again, kind of, in, in a certain way, um, you know, but we, we have wear and tear and, and that's normal and that's okay. Yeah. But what we can do is at least kind of halt that wear and tear or actually better it. You know, I also have many clients that say, I feel better now than I did in my thirties and forties, you know, and they just wish they would have gotten involved in exercise. Do I have all of them going and squatting two or 300 pounds? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's really not required. If you want to be the strongest in squats, great, we'll focus on it. But that doesn't need to be the focus. We don't have to do these certain things. I want you to be able to control your own body. I want you to be able to eventually control that the body with a little bit of resistance. Um, we've even done things where I'll just put a vest on Bill that's an extra 20 pounds. And it just distracts his body. It distracts his body and his core, his core system, not the abs. Remember, it's not just the core, the whole core that keeps our spine in line, our pelvis in line, it controls our limbs. And that's how we move throughout the day. We use our feet, we use our arms, our trunk is in the center, and we move around. And if we don't know how to do it well, we just got to find some simple, goofy little exercises to have fun and stimulate the body so you have to adapt to that. And yes, Bill has made incredible strength gains. Um, I would probably say the, the biggest gains that we would talk about is just postural. I would probably say three years into it, something like that. He was walking into my gym and the, the last spot I was at, it was a long driveway to the main road. And I remember I looked at him and then I looked away and I looked back because I didn't even really recognize him. It, it, didn't, it didn't look like the bill that I first saw walk around the corner, you know, at 24 hour fitness. And it's fantastic. You know, those are, those are amazing things. And that's more of like the goals that I want you guys to hold for yourselves. Not how fast you can run a mile, not how much we can bicep curl, not how much we can chest press, you know, more so that you can go and go for a hike if you choose to. You can go and ride a bike if you choose to. That was a big one for Bill because he didn't have the strength in his triceps or the confidence in his body to hold himself up on a bike with the handles in front. He felt like the triceps would give out and he would go forward. I don't think he was wrong. I think he was correct. We needed to do certain things that stimulated those muscle groups and got it all to work again. You know, and if it's all the upper traps, like you were asking earlier, you're right. That team, that one, one man team is going to get fatigued. You need the whole team to be there, which is our, all of our joints and all of our muscles when doing most things. And that's our endurance. That's our longevity. That's where, that's where we can go on that hike with maybe your kids or your grandkids, whatever, and, and last, or even just by yourself last, you know, there's a lot of beautiful things out there to go see, you know, and if we're unable to do that, the mental process starts getting worn down. 
And that's what I was kind of, you know, talking about beforehand that we need that mental process and physical process, you know, to both, to be a team, they've got to be there together. And which one do we focus on more? Everybody's different, you know, so make that decision for yourself. You know, I mean, is there one day that you have this or maybe a month that you just got to focus here, have focuses, have the plan. And most times we can usually stick to that and have some success. Yeah. Can I ask another question? Absolutely. Of course. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, with the videos and what, you know, I can just, you know, what Mitch was saying. I mean, so Bill can now, he couldn't raise a glass to his face before. And now he can. I've seen him where he was, he's able to get his arm up, which he absolutely could not do before. He has much more balance. I think, um, I don't know if he's documented like falling or not, not you know, but I'm, I have to assume he doesn't fall as much as he might have before i mean so these are you know major major quality of life changes i think it really is that was actually you may be remember us talking about that once bill um i want to say it was probably maybe a year and a half into training and he made a comment saying i've gone long enough without falling that i don't have any scabs on my knees and that's that's big that's big, 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 you know, the scabs themselves, were we super concerned with that? Not necessarily, but I mean, blunt trauma and trauma to your, your bones and joints all the time. It's not good. You know, you don't really want that to happen. Um, and a lot of times that really means the coordination is just not there. So yes, of course, I don't want them to have scabs. I don't want them to fall, but that's maybe just one fall away from it being worse too. Mm-hmm. You know, if we hit our head, if we break a hip, you know, and that can happen all the time. I mean, I have a client's friend that was just mopping in her kitchen, slipped and fell and broke her hip, you know? And so it's, it's the strength, you know, of the tissues around those joints as well mm-hmm. is, is a big factor as well. So there's so much more to why we exercise and why Bill wants to continue doing this and continue seeing me twice a week. I mean, we hang out a lot. I hang out with some of my clients more than I do my friends, you know, and, and that's okay. I, I love it. It's, you know, it's what makes me, me. And it's, you know, it gives me some good encouragement too to continue myself going and, you know, just get it's, that's the quality of life that, you know, I'm looking for and for me to give that to my clients too. And when he shares those certain things with me, it just, you know, it, it's why I do my job. It's why I do it. And it's why I really enjoy this too. So you can probably tell by my energy and my back and forth with communication and or conversations rather. I really do. I really enjoy this. I really like to share it. Um, and it's mostly because of the feedback that I get from the people that I share it with. They say it's sometimes just a game changer, you know, and it's not the one exercise that I'm telling you guys that's all of a sudden going to be like, whoa, I didn't know that Mitch knew that one exercise. It's like, no, I don't. I don't have that. I wish I did. I wish I could tell you guys that it's just this one thing that you guys aren't doing and you're going to be all good. It's really, it's, it's the whole situation. You know, it's the approach, it's the positivity, it's the having a plan, it's the having maybe a partner or a coach, you know, and it's, it's accountability is huge. You know, me keeping Bill accountable and saying, hi, good morning, Bill, just to let you know, I'll be there at 1130, you know, certain things like that. It's huge because yes, there's a lot of days where sometimes we all just kind of say, oh, I could go without doing that today, you know, and then we just bust through it, we get it done. And everybody usually feels better after that. So, you know, sometimes it's just making the plan happen. George, you go ahead, because I've already had a question. I'll I'll ask mine after yours. Okay, no, Mitch, I, I, I like what you're saying, you know, you, you have a very different approach to this from most uh, fitness coaches and, and uh, trainers is in the sense that the other guys will, will try and push you harder and harder. Uh, you basically bring in the realism about everyone's individual capacity and Absolutely. what they can handle. Uh, and, and, and that I like. Absolutely. The other thing is that... Uh, Obviously, most of us are on a, on a spectrum. Um, you know, you've got people that are severely affected, that are seriously uh, strained in terms of what they can do. Um, and then others, you know, are at this stage allowed a little bit more freedom and a little bit more movement. 
And I think that's where it's important for every one of us to uh, understand your own body mm -hmm. and understand your own muscle groups and how, how it all fits together. Because I realized as you know, very young, I realized that I've got problems with my stomach muscles. And what started happening is I started compensating with my back. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure in the long term that it worked for me because now I'm struggling with my back. But, totally. you know, be it as it may, there are ways that you can compensate for a lot of these things. And uh, having a trainer like yourself that understands the process uh, makes it easier to do something like that. So I think, you know, you know what you're saying is great. Uh, I think you re really have a, a very good understanding, obviously with Bill as well you have a very good understanding of what it's all about. And, you know, for that, kudos. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's just there, there's no, nothing else that's more encouraging than having somebody tell you, I can do this now and I couldn't do that before, you know, and I'm just going to voice it over and over and over. It's not that one exercise and it's not about the crazy intensities. You know, you don't need to have that, that, professional trainer or that drill sergeant trainer saying go harder go more go lower do more you're not doing it you're not doing it well enough you know just just be consistent you know we're looking for certain patterns to be more efficient you know find these certain exercises that allow you to teach your body because that is a word that i say in my sessions all the time i would really honestly i'd almost kind of be curious to see how much i say that in some of my sessions is let 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 yourself teach it Teach your ankle to do this. Teach your elbow to do this. Teach your shoulder to do this. You know, and just a, just a little bit ago, when you asked the question about, you know, how do you know where to go? Where to, like, what are the, like, how do you know there's weakness? How do you know that's not happening? Well, you know, you got to break it down. And our knee, our knee bends. Okay. And there's muscles that make that happen. It doesn't rotate. That comes from the hip and the ankle. So you need to kind of have, or more so maybe find somebody that has the understanding of all of that, because there is about 206 bones and about 610 plus muscles. So that's a lot to understand. I don't think you need to understand all those, but have a little bit of that concept of if my hand goes to my shoulder, what muscle is working? Well, it's your bicep for the most part. Can we compensate a little bit and use some of the muscles in the forearm? Yes, we can. But does the forearm muscles also help the bicep do that? Yes, it does. So we need to make sure that just the whole line of muscles and chain, the, the, the chain of effect rather, you know, to be all working all the way from where the weight is, the resistance up to the point of, you know, origin to where the, the limb is. So hand, wrist, forearm, elbow, bicep, tricep, shoulder, it's all working together. And that's what you need to find instead of just really making sure that you're getting to the gym and just doing the exercise to get it done have more of an understanding and i think you'll be able to teach yourself with that understanding how to do different exercises and which ones would be best for you so crystal has her hand up and then i think lone wobble maybe he's showed up on the video so go ahead crystal um mitch with you mentioned earlier um about the the brain muscle um, connection. So you're mm -hmm. training the brain to do certain things. So um, would you, the, sometimes with like a neck brace or a back brace, uh, I find that I'm, I, I walk better if I've got my neck brace on and somehow the pain doesn't seem to be as bad, but I definitely feel like I can walk better when I've got my neck brace on. If I've got my neck brace on, I can do a whole lot of things um, a great deal better, like my tapping, everything else seems to be um, a lot better when I've got my neck brace on. Now, is that to say, because the brain is kind of sending message to say, you are now supported, it's okay, likewise with the back brace, or so is that the mind body, the mind muscle coordination or um, a message? Um, and is that what you mean? And when you say that you're training the brain or how, how can we train the brain mm -hmm. to, um, to effectively support our muscles? Yeah, I mean, another great question there. Um, and I would say it's a little bit of both. Now there is one thing of the level of confidence that you're gonna have because of the new postural setting that you're in because of a brace. So it's gonna put 
push you into that position where you're like, oh, and so it's a little bit more here, probably a little bit taller, not forward, not compressed. If we go forward, these all go forward with us too. These meaning our shoulders, our scapula, our neck bones, you know, everything is now protruded forward, like as if you're sitting at the computer, like we are all, all are right now, you know, with our heads forward looking. So we need to get into different positions to the point where you need to almost train yourself with certain exercises that would get you into that same position that has that the neck brace does too. So it's a little bit of a sense of confidence. It's a little bit of a, of a crutch to bring you into a different position that will just help relieve those areas and get other areas to have to support. You know, it's a little bit kind of like the sense of an ice cream, a scoop of ice cream on a cone. If that scoop of ice cream is sitting on the side of a cone, it's gonna give irritation and we wanna get it back in. So that's really, you know, we wanna be sitting in the center. So how do we do that? You know, really my first thought if I was training you right now, I'd either put you on the ground and make sure that your head is touching the ground and that your spine does not arch up off the ground or else that's compensation or stand tall and just put your head back into the, into the wall. You know, and we can't have that forward protrusion. Now we can just do all those exercises, but then is it going to stay? Maybe not. And that's what strengthening is. Strengthening is going to be that staple. It's going to staple things into place more. And so let's go, let's say we start doing some separations where it's like you have just your hands in front and you pull them straight back towards the wall. Those are muscles back there that are pulling everything backwards. Okay. Now with that said, we need to make it to the point that those muscles get strong enough to keep it back there. Now, if we just kind of all stop doing like whatever you don't use, you'll lose. That's just kind of the way it works. You know, so if we get to the point that, oh, I've got some weaker muscles up here, so I'm just not going to address those. You're just going to keep kind of adding on to the problem. You know, and if we go and work our chest, but yet we're really rounded because our spine is forward, our shoulders are forward. That's an issue. You know, so I had a gentleman once that came into me and said, I want to work my chest. And I said, OK, cool, we're going to work your back. He said, no, 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 no. I, I said, I want to work my chest. And I said, great, we're going to work on your back. And so we worked on his back, which then pulled his posture more open. And guess what? His chest looked bigger. That was his goal. I had some experience. I went this way. We got his goal. So it's really more to the point of what is that push-pull balance? How do we get that structure to sit more in the center? And that's the, that's the way it works with all of our joints, whether it's our lower abs and our spine. If the lower abs are going forward and the stomach goes forward, well, it's going to kind of gravitate and pull that spine forward. So we need to get them stronger so they sit down into more of a flexed position and then they relieve that pull from the spine. And then we can do the other areas to balance that all out. And that's the same concept with whether it's, like I said, the shoulder, the spine, the pelvic area, the ankle, you know, the thigh muscles. There's a lot of, a lot of muscles and a lot of action going on. So yes, sometimes it does become more complex. Keep it simple. Think about how strengthening is stapling you into place to be stronger for the long haul. Thanks, Mitch. Thank of you. Of course, of course. Thank you. Does anybody else have, have other questions? Because I see it's already eight o'clock. Um, but does anybody have, have questions for Mitch? It's been so much valuable information. Benwaba, did you want to ask something? Yes, uh, not necessarily a question, but uh, yeah, I'd just like to, I mean, this is something that is very uh, uh, close to my heart, most definitely, you know, fitness and uh, rehabilitation. Absolutely. Uh, having gone through it, having gone through my own journey, and uh, it's just amazing the way you're speaking, because it's, it's, it's very rare to find um, uh, fitness professionals or uh, those who are actually in tune with FSHD and dealing with uh, physical rehabilitation and uh, within the sphere that that uh, you are at, so uh, it all hits close to home, and uh, it's just amazing the amount of knowledge that you have and how well spoken you are about, about it. So, uh, yeah, it's just yeah, I'll definitely you. follow you up, and uh, yeah, uh, that's great, man. Thank you very much. I very much appreciate yeah. that. It's, it's just uh, really, really yeah, great. I mean, it's, it's those comments, man. Honestly, it's those comments that keep me, you know, wanting to learn more, educate myself. I mean you know, experience is, is you, you can't really, you, you can't beat experience and working with people individually, you know, and learning the process of how to get this to here to then to the next stage, you know, and it's really, it's a little bit of a guess and check 
game, have educated guesses, of course, but you know, everybody is so unique and so different that what might work for you might not work for the next person, but then what worked for them, it's not going to work for you. So it's more of a sit back, know what the goal is, have those little stages to be able to get to that goal, you know, and just, it's, it's about creativity, you know, and is every single exercise that we choose the best one, the right one? No, I, I wouldn't say that either. I mean, I, I wish I could say I'm hundred percent right all the time, but I mean, you know, that, that wouldn't really be all that fun either. It's, this is a fun process. Bill and I enjoy it. You know, we've had, obviously we've had some really good success too, but like, I'm really going to stick to that. And I say that all the time. It's got to be fun. You have to set it up to the point where it's entertaining. You're learning, you're teaching, you know, and, and I'm going to kind of step back to that mind body connection again. You know, Bill had a hard time feeling the, the muscles work. So I would actually just sit there and almost kind of, you know, be almost like a woodpecker, like annoying and just press on the muscles that I know need to be working when he's doing that action. And then he'd go, oh, oh yeah, okay, okay. And then they'd start working more. And that is the mind-body connection. That's when the brain really has a lot of power to say, fire, work, keep working, keep working, keep working. And then after a while, we don't have to do that. It just does it, it works, you know? And do we have to do that sometimes, you know, on a refresher? Absolutely. I mean, I play a lot of golf and if I never go and practice putting, I'm not going to be very good at golf. You know, you got to practice the things that make you better. Don't forget about the little beginning exercises that got you to, you know, the next step. You still got to go back and do those sometimes. It's maintenance. Keep your body moving. Keep it consistent. Listen to your body and it'll go a long ways. Thank you, Mitch. You've been very inspiring and given us so much hope. Um, Perfect, good. I know for a lot of us, uh, I know for me, definitely, it's, you know, you you sort of lose hope because you you recognize that this muscle's failing. It's not as strong as what it used to be. And then other, then you lose your balance and this happens and that happens. And it totally. just, um, you know, you, can, you get discouraged. So thank you. This has really been very um, inspiring and given hope that you can actually keep yourself going for Perfect. longer than what you thought so 100 um, thank you so much and Mitch do you um could you send an uh, send me an email with ways that we could contact you so that if Absolutely. we would want to have personal training sessions with you remotely or whatever that um even if it's just a few sessions to yep. get us on track um, 100 get hold of you Yep, I will send you some contact information and a couple of my uh, social media aspects too of where Bill and I like to post. And I'm not going to lie. I mean, you know, sometimes it's uh, just a little motivation that we need from other people and knowing that people are listening for us to post more. Because I mean, if, if no one's, if no one's, you know, interested, <laughs> I mean, we'll just chat, you know, Bill and I, but getting some feedback from you guys is great. So don't hesitate, you know, send us messages, let us know, let us know what you want to hear. You know, I mean, I, I talk with people so much that I don't really know necessarily exactly what you guys want to hear. So that's why I said to interrupt me, ask questions. It's really what, you know, I want to give the information that you all want to hear. There's a lot of things to control. There's a lot of approaches to do. Keep it simple. Keep it consistent. You know, and if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks, Mitch. Really appreciate that. I, I have a final, I have a final piece as well. <laughs> Go for it, for those, for those that want to get hold of, of, of him even quicker, if you just uh, Google Ramp Fitness Portland, Portland Oregon, you'll you'll get to his website. <laughs> there you uh, go. <laughs> I've, I've actually you, really, I've already checked it out. Uh, and then, Mitch, I need you because uh, need you because my wife is also listening in. I need you to stress the importance of golf for people with FSHD. How important it is to play. Absolutely. You know, every little bit of support I can get, so I can be on the course a little bit more. <laughs> So, so I really, I really touched a home as well when I talked about golf with you, huh? <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. I just played a couple of days ago and it was a good reminder because I haven't played since my son was born. So it's a, uh, it's a good reminder for, you know, getting out and not just having exercise and, you know, fitness be in the gym, you know, I mean, I'm very mindful of what I'm doing on the golf course. And that's what I want people to do in general is just be mindful of your movements, you know, continue to teach yourself. If I hit a bad shot, I don't just say, oh, I'll do better the next time. I think about maybe why I hit a bad shot, you know, and yes, I know that's a lot, a little bit more than maybe I want everybody else doing, but you can break down most things. If something's good, break it down and ask why it was good. If something's bad, break it down and ask why it's bad. That's how we learn. 
you know, that's how we'll move on, figure out new exercises, new ways for us, and, you know, just setting up for success again. Great. Thank uh, you, Mitch. Absolutely.